Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today we're talking about the day two episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the discussion topics in there and the lessons within that episode, and at the end I'm going to share with you a sneak peek of what's happening next week on the series. But before any of that, if you haven't seen the day two episode yet, here's a link up here. You can click on it and find out what we're talking about. Wait a moment. And then we're back. Okay. So what's going on in this series is that my character is sort of trying to recover from an electromagnetic pulse. In the episode just prior, there's a big explosion in space, which in this episode my uh, character is saying he surmises is an electromagnetic pulse because the whole grid went down. A lot of his electronic devices were uh, were fried. Now. Uh, this series is about aliens invading, uh, but an electromagnetic pulse does not require alien intervention to occur. In fact, they happen naturally. Just about 150 years ago, back in the cowboy days, uh, the sun popped off a solar flare. Uh, there was a coronal mass ejection, and it created a, an EMP uh, wave that uh, hit the Earth. Now, back in cowboy days, there weren't really that much for electronics back then. Uh, there was a telegraph system, and there's stories about the telegraph wires having melted off the poles, uh, you know, from the electromagnetic surge of energy going through it. Um, but it didn't, didn't really change most people's days. Now today, with our reliance on electronics, if something like that happened again, and someday it will, uh, it would be a, a major event for everyone, and there would be millions and millions of deaths, I think. I, some people suggests that there could be, you know, 90% of the United States population could die in, under an event like that. I, I think, I'm not sure how much research has really gone into that number. There's kind of a rumor that that was just taken out of the One Second After series books and government bureaucrats grabbed onto it. So I'm not sure, but you don't need a lot of imagination to realize that, you know, the shit would get real if, if all of our elect, elect, uh, electric grid went down. Uh, you, you know, just anything from, from shipping goods to, uh, you know, medical services and all that, it would all be impacted. It would be really dreadful. Um, we don't have to wait for something, uh, you know, on one of these like uh, hundred year cycles either, you know, with a solar flare uh, to create an event like that. Humans are really great at creating their own disasters. And right now I'm sure you've seen on the news that the North Koreans now have the ability to launch an ICBM to anywhere really in the continental United States. Uh, so they can launch a nuclear weapon and hit anywhere. Now, uh, for the longest time, people were saying, ah, you know, they'll never, they'll never even get there. Don't worry about it. They're driving around in Model T Fords over there. <laughs> They're all backwards. Uh, I didn't prescribe to that school of thought. I felt that they were a threat. And uh, now they, uh, you know, they have the ability to, to strike out anywhere. Now, a lot of those same people are saying, ah, don't worry about it. Cause you know, the re-entry, you know, they haven't figured out the re-entry of these missiles. And, uh, you know, the missiles will probably break up when they're coming, coming in. Uh, so, you know, we don't really have to worry about that. But the, the deal with an electromagnetic pulse weapon is that it's a nuclear weapon exploded, it's a type of nuclear weapon exploded high up in the atmosphere before it's really re-entered at all. And it spreads a electromagnetic shock wave that goes out and hits a very, very large area, um, you know, beneath it. Uh, and if you have any sense that we don't even have to worry about that because any of these missiles, you know, we could just shoot them down. Uh, you probably aren't aware that our, our um, missile defense systems really only work at two places. Uh, they work while the missile is coming in. It's coming in hot right through the atmosphere. That, that last critical couple of minutes before it actually strikes somewhere that we can shoot them down there and we can shoot them down when they're going up. When they're up like crazy high, you know, out in space, essentially, we don't have the capability of, of knocking stuff down uh, up there. Uh, it's really just when it's launching and then when it's coming back down. Now, an EMP weapon doesn't need to do that re-entry part of it. It's going to explode up high. So we lose that option uh, of knocking it out there. So the only option we have at that point is when it's taking off initially. And if you consider how many nuclear tests the North Koreans have done and nobody has ever shot any of those down. For example, their, their most recent ICBM test, they shot it off. Nobody really did anything. It went into outer space. Nobody exactly knew what the trajectory was going to be. That could have been an offensive weapon being launched at the United States. And we wouldn't really know until it was out in space and headed for us. And then all we would have is that last couple minutes to, uh, to hit it when it's coming back in. But like we said, uh, for an EMP weapon, it doesn't really have to come in that far. So. The United States is very vulnerable to this type of thing. Now that said, I don't think that the North Koreans would ever preemptively uh, initiate a war with the United States. That'd be suicide for them. The only reason, in my opinion, they have the nuclear weapons is purely deterrence. Uh, they've seen that the United States has no problem toppling dictators and 
you know, anyone that kind of, you know, gets on our bad side uh, of countries that are non-nuclear powers, but if it's a nuclear power, we ha uh, don't tend to, you know, to go in and do much. And they want to get into that club, and uh, they're pretty much there now. Uh, the only uh, reason for concern, I guess, is that our current administration seems to have at least a sense, maybe, that they, they have an appetite for engaging in a nuclear war with North Korea. I hope they don't go that way, but if they did, an EMP weapon uh, re in a retaliatory strike by North Korea is completely plausible, completely doable, and very difficult to defend against for the reasons that we described earlier. So. Is this part of your preparedness plan? Uh, the idea of being prepared for an electromagnetic pulse. Uh, now, obviously, we can't really do much for the world around us. Uh, the uh, you know the larger grid would go down. There's, it has not been hardened, and a lot of the government pro programs that have looked into trying to harden the grid against this type of thing, they've lost their funding. They're just not not working on it. It seems like the government's plan for surviving an EMP pulse is just continuity of government that. You know, the elites would, you know, go off to their bunker somewhere and hide while the rest of us kind of do whatever we do. And then they kind of emerge later and, you know, repopulate the United States, man. <laughs> uh, that's sort of, it seems like that's kind of the plan that they're, they're going with, which I guess in the long run would work, but it's not all that awesome for the rest of us. Um, so are there things that you're planning to do on your local level to uh, help weather that? I know a lot of people think that, you know, if that just happened, they just go back to 18th century living. People live like that for a while, just live, live without electronic devices. Uh, is that your plan, to just go back to that level of living? Uh, or are there certain electronic devices that you would like to hold on to? In the, um, in the episode, I'm putting things in there uh, like, uh, you know, solar panels, which I, you know, later uh, we'll find out that uh, solar panels are really not all that affected. Uh, batteries also are not that affected. Not everything is affected. It's mostly the cool stuff that gets affected by EMP. You know, cell phones, computers, things of that nature. But I'm storing some critical things in there uh, that will help me to, you know, at least keep some of my electronic devices working. What, what do you think are your critical devices that you would want to keep going? Or do you feel that at that point just, you know, let it go and go back to 18th century living? What are your thoughts on that? I know this was kind of a long wrap-up episode. I hope that it was um, useful to you in some way. Uh, it, but if you're still here waiting, here is the, uh, uh, the clip of uh, stuff that's about to start happening next week. I will let you know that next week's episode starts happening. You know, up until now, it's been kind of like a little quiet. Stuff starts happening next week. Shit starts getting real. I think that's a line from the episode, Damon. <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the clip. I don't know. Another 24, 48 hours, shit's going to start getting real. And, you know, there might be looters. You know, we live in kind of a rural area, but, you know, you don't know. So so we just chatted about that, you know, kind of keeping an eye on each other, watch each other's back, you know. At least in terms of that, you're stronger with two than one. So, so we talked about that a little bit. Uh, and what is that? I don't, that's not fighter jets. A new noise. Let's go check it out. Every day is so exciting now. This is awesome. Except not at all. Let's see. Oh God, it's loud. It's loud. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.